develop quality infrastructure that will bring prosperity to millions of Nigerians in both urban and rural areas. Federal government to sustain the deployment of geographic information services towards boosting agricultural productivity. If someone is coming back from China, he should be quarantined, not self-isolation. Senate insists on compulsory screening of all passengers coming into the country from China and countries affected with coronavirus. We appeal to Nigerians to support the military as it moves to decapitate the insurgents. Federal government enjoins religious leaders to eschew sentiments in their comments on insurgency. And in sports, NTA to broadcast 2020 National Sports Festival. Hello, a lovely evening to you and welcome to the news on the network service of the NTA. I am Joseph Johnson. Hingunu John Adams and Naomi Aboku will be joining me from Lagos and Maiduguri respectively. The federal government has pledged to sustain the deployment of geographic information services and other similar technologies towards helping farmers achieve increased yields and productivity. President Muhammad Buhari made this known while exchanging views with a delegation of the Surveyors Council of Nigeria, led by the president of the International Federation of Surveyors, Professor Rudolf Steiger. Uh, State House correspondent Adam Sambo has the report. The President of the International Federation of Surveyors, Professor Rudolf Steger, is in Nigeria to witness the induction of new surveyors into the Register of Surveyors Council and the investiture of the modern edition of Senator Ahmed Lawan Award for the Development of Survey and Geoinformatics in the country. President Muhammad Buhari described as pleasing that Nigerian surveyors are recognized and indeed celebrated globally. Indeed, the city of Abuja, which was conceived in 1976, is an excellent example of the good work delivered by your profession. As you are aware, the city we are seeing today was designed and built through the collaboration of many local and international surveyors, engineers, and geofacial experts. I am therefore not surprised when you mentioned that Nigeria hosted one of the best and biggest ever attended working weeks in the 140 years history of the Federation. In the last five years, the president said the federal government has embarked on critical infrastructure development and rehabilitation of projects across Nigeria. He said roads, bridges, rail tracks, airports, and affordable housing are being designed and executed in an unprecedented manner. Our goal is simple. We will develop quality infrastructure that will bring prosperity to millions of Nigerians in both urban and rural areas. To achieve this, we are working with surveyors, engineers, and town planners. I am therefore confident that the 344 new surveyors inducted into the register of the Surveyors Council of Nigeria will be very busy in the coming years. President Buhari expressed delight that many states in Nigeria are currently adopting the geographic information services for both urban and rural development. The federal government, he explained, remains on track in using similar technologies towards achieving the desired agricultural revolution. The President International Federation of Surveyors, Professor Rudolf Steger, had described his engagement with President Muhammad Buhari as a great opportunity in view of the Nigerian leader's international reputation of honesty, integrity, and selflessness in service to his country and humanity. And we thank you for your support, and we hope to have also your support in the future. Surveying and geoinformatics is very important for the development of each society, for the betterment. And geographical data is a backbone for this. We in the world, we create data every day, and more than 50% of this data is related to places, to where. And this is where surveyors are delivering a lot. 
Professor Steger said the International Federation of Surveyors is proud to be associated with Nigeria, now being revived for a prosperous future by one of the greatest sons of Africa. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Meanwhile, Quantity Surveyors Registration Board of Nigeria is growing its numerical strength with induction of registered professionals pursuant to achieving the mandate of ensuring value for money in civil construction in the country. On Nengia Fine Face reports. Ibrahim Aminu is a management staff with the Nigerian Television Authority and one of 211 registered quantities of yes. now qualified for induction as professionals. They came in as hopefuls. With this host, they are now certified and licensed as quantity surveyors, handed the task of ensuring quality in Nigeria's infrastructure development drive. So it's very essential for the profession and equally the nation at large because uh, you cannot just be practicing without being a member of a body that is set up by the government to regulate the professions. The fact that being inducted only makes it much more better because I'll try my best more to make sure that um, we work on the lapses we have on the infrastructure. However, it's not just fun fair. Inductees here are required to yes. take note of emerging technologies, innovations and opportunities while rebranding and repositioning ourselves for enhanced service delivery. We must continue to upscale our practices whether we're in the public sector or in the private sector. Adopting and developing innovative technologies as construction entrepreneurs, our opportunities are waiting the likes of Amino and his contemporaries as they now walk the path of not just quantity but quality in quantity surveying. In Abuja, on Nengie Fine Face, NTA News. President Muhammad Buhari has strongly expressed the willingness of the federal government to partner with critical stakeholders towards achieving a transparently successful second cycle review process of the African Peer Review Mechanism. This was while receiving an AUAPRM team led by the chairman, National Governing Council of APRM Nigeria, Senator Abba Ali. State House correspondent Adam Asambu has more. President Muhammad Buhari has described as welcoming that Nigeria has been adjudged to have made significant progress in the pursuit of programs that promote democratic values, participatory governance, and probity in public life. His administration, he said, has introduced policies and projects that focus on creating an inclusive and diversified economy, eliminating corruption, and restoring peace to areas of conflict. Furthermore, pertinent to our current mission to Nigeria and in accordance with the guidelines of the PR review, a 15-member Nigerian National Governing Council of the African PR review mechanism has been constituted and inaugurated. This council will drive the process of the second PR review and future periodic reviews to ensure adherence to the separate of broad-based participation envisaged in the African Peer Review Mechanism. The federal government, President Buhari promised, will provide all the necessary and required support to the country secretariat of the APRM towards achieving a successful review process in accordance with the recommendations of the Forum of Heads of State and Government of the African Union. Nigeria shall, through the APRM Nigerian Secretariat, organize a participatory and transparent national process for self-assessment and country review. The federal government will partner with state and local governments and the private sector in achieving this. Both the chairman, governing council of APRM Nigeria, Senator Abba Ali, and the lead panel member in charge of Nigeria, Ambassador Umar Mona from Egypt, described the second review process as imperative towards promoting, strengthening, and increasing the effectiveness of governance standards and socio-economic development of the country. Nigeria has taken a bold and courageous step to commit itself to undertake 
this second review process in promoting of good governance and development of its people. The APR panel pledge to give the necessary support or to your excellency and the people of Nigeria to ensure that the country achieves this noble objective. The African PR review mechanism, APRM, is a tool for reinforcing best practices and lead to political stability, high economic growth, sustainable development, and accelerated sub-regional and continental economic integration. They say a panel of eminent persons of the APRM was in Nigeria to participate in the sensitization mission ahead of the second cycle review process now ongoing and expected to be concluded in August this year. From the State House, Adam Usambu, NTA News. And sensitization workshop for Nigeria's second peer review, sensitization and training for Nigeria's second peer review is underway in Abuja. Victor Azu reports that the process is an opportunity for the country to compare notes with other African countries with a view to identifying areas of improvement in governance. These are delegates from different African countries, key players in the African peer review mechanism. They have converged on Abuja to share experiences which could benefit Nigeria in reinforcing best practices, identifying deficiencies and assessing capacity building needs as the country prepares for a second peer review. As a way of instilling confidence in the delegates, the Chief Executive Officer of the New Partnership for Africa's Development, NEPAD, assures of a fair process. Mr. President is happy with the sensitization program going on and he has given us his words as the father that he's ready to support the national secretariat and the governing council as well as requesting that all the stakeholders should come together for the effectiveness of our second conduct of review. To clear every lingering doubt, both the executive and legislature also promise the required support to ensure success of the process. We bear a moral responsibility to ensure that the African peer review process is revitalized to keep its promise of good governance for Africa. The National Assembly shall provide the required legislative backing and any other assistance as may be necessary for the success of the country review visit and the peer review process in general. As they go into the deliberations proper, hopes are high that Nigeria will make the most of this opportunity 12 years after the first review. In Abuja, Victor Azu NTA News. Let's now turn to the National Assembly now, where the Senate has uh, considered the Companies and Allied Matters Act repeal bill that seeks to reenact the Companies and Allied Matters Act 2020 to make provision for more business-friendly regime in Nigeria. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Nkwo reports that the bill has been passed through second reading. By 30 minutes past 10 o'clock Thursday morning, Senators had settled down for the 15th plenary of the year. Legislative intervention in the nation's economy dominated the day's session. A bill that seeks to give Nigeria a legal framework for a flexible, convenient and easy environment for business registration and operation was the first order on the other paper. This development had the potential of increasing the tax base of the country as well as increasing the revenue arm from taxation of corporate entities. We simply bring investor confidence to Nigeria. One-man businesses will be able to now conform uh, to these simplified regulations and uh, expand financial inclusion. The bill seeks to eliminate obsolete sections, introduce e-registration, remove obstacles to registration of businesses, and attract foreign investment into the country. The world is moving in digital, and everything is technology now. We can say that the Kama bill is a bill designed for the Nigerian youth. To provide a very convenient, easy environment for businesses to be registered and up to their operations. The Senate continued on ease of doing business strategy as it also passed through second reading 
the bill that seeks to provide legal backing for electronic transactions in Nigeria, sponsored by Senator Ibikunle Amosun. The bill, when passed into law, will also reduce cost of doing business and protection of rights of online consumers. Not only in revolutionizing our transaction system, but also to the survivor, growth and stability of our financial sector and indeed the banking industry. Senate resolved to investigate reasons for the huge difference between deposits and lending interest rates among banks in Nigeria as moved in a motion by Senator Solomon Adiola from the National Assembly, Ignatius Ukwo, NTA News. And President of the Senate, Ahmad Lawan, has called for compulsory screening of all passengers coming into Nigeria from China and other countries affected by the coronavirus. This followed a point of order by the Deputy Leader of the Senate, Senator Ajayi Barofus, who drew the attention of the Senate to what he described as non-screening of passengers in some airports in Nigeria. When I arrived yesterday at the Namdiazikwe airport, there was no screening. All we were given is a sheet of paper to indicate whether we were sick, whether we have been to one country or the other, and how we will be contacted. If someone is coming back from China, he should be quarantined, not self-isolation. should be quarantined for whether it is two weeks or four weeks. We have to protect the lives of Nigerians. Senate has considered the bill that seeks to amend the Tertiary Education Trust Fund Act to include tertiary teaching hospitals sponsored by Senator Betty Apiafi and the bill that seeks to prohibit flaring of gas in Nigeria sponsored by Senator Basi Akban. Both bills were passed through second reading. Institute, the tertiary health sector, uh, the tertiary health um, institutions should also benefit from the Institution fund. It is surprising in the first place that we have a fund for tertiary institutions and the teaching hospitals have been omitted from this because essentially they are equally a tertiary institution. In the meantime, the House of Representatives has initiated a legislation that will allow for provision of additional source of funding aside budgetary allocation to the Nigerian Armed Forces to enhance procurement of needed logistics. A bill to that effect, sponsored by Chairman House Committee on Defense, Representative Baba Jimmy Benson, passed second reading at plenary first day. National Assembly correspondent Lamia Ali reports. The bill makes provisions for special financial support, training and procurement of modern security equipment to revamp Nigerian armed forces. It's a mixture, it's a portfolio of government and private sector uh, funding. Sir. Our budgeting system operates on the basis of envelope. And the envelope allocated to defense at, it, as, at present cannot effectively take care of of our challenges. When you even buy equipments for the armed forces to prosecute a particular war, you should realize that there could be wear and tear. The bill caused the unanimous support of House members. Security is not only government business, it's everybody's business. And security is very, very expensive. No nation on earth funds its security or its armed forces through the normal budgetary line. We have something akin to that. We're at a major security crisis and uh, we need to create funds that will, that, that, will, um, that will support that. Other bills that pass second reading include a bill to establish Federal University of Sports in Alfuze, Edo State, sponsored by Representative Julius Nyomberi, a bill to establish Federal University of Medicine and Health Science, Bida, Niger State, sponsored by Representative Saidu Abdullahi, in a bill to establish Federal Medical Center, Mubi, Adama State, sponsored by Representative Jafar Magaji. Increase in population of Adama State. Therefore, another federal tertiary health institution is not only desirable, but also necessary. Plenary also resolved to ensure that the activities of National Health Insurance Scheme are scaled up for enhanced healthcare delivery to Nigerians as moved by Ferdinand Ngonko. Meanwhile, 
The lawmakers following a motion from Representative Chudi Ifangi passed a resolution to investigate the Federal Ministry of Works and other agencies on allegations of slow piece of work on the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, the Abuja Kaduna Zaria Kano Road, and the second Niger Bridge project, despite the release of more than 150 billion naira by the federal government. Julius Beja is involved in all these three critical projects, and of course, other major road projects under Suku. Participation and sponsorship, call Edidiong on 070 197 733 or Chinwe on 090 559 61514. This event is powered by Nigerian Television Authority, TV Enterprises. Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, FRCN, African Independent Television, and Ray Pa FM, Silverbird Television, and Rhythm FM, The Albino Foundation, The Ivory Aid Ball, for a worthy course. Watch out. Glad to know you are still with us. The National Economic Council has directed Adamawa, Plateau and Nasarawa states to submit their detailed plans of action for the immediate takeoff of the National Livestock Implementation Plan of the federal government. State House correspondent Aliu Kabir has the details of this and other resolutions of the NEC meeting in Abuja. This is the second National Economic Council meeting in 2020 and 102 in its series. The meeting, chaired by the Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo behind closed doors, deliberated on issues of utmost national importance. Briefing State House press crew after the meeting, the Governor of Ebony State, Dave Uma, he said, the council has received the balance sheet of the excess crude account as at 24th of February 2020 from the Minister of Finance, Zainab Shamsuna Ahmad, who stands at $71,830,000, while the stabilization account, as well as the balance of the development of natural resources account, within the same period of 24th of February, stands at about $34,000,000. 186 million naira and 1 billion 890 million naira respectively on the issue of the national livestock transformation plan of the federal government the governor said the focus has been shifted to the implementation he added that after due consideration and analysis of the report of the survey by the council the federal government is committing 80 percent of the counterpart funding leaving 20 percent of the benefiting state of adamawa Plateau and Nasarawa. After the initial decisions were made by the state governors, the focus of the initiative shifted to the implementation. Outline of the established engagement process includes one letter of intent and counterpart funding, state livestock transmission office and community engagement. Preliminary analysis of survey results which includes data capture analysis, such as analysis of enumerated data on five gazetted grazing reserves. And the second prayer was that uh, this state should commit 5% of this funding to support the work of the Secretariat in line with the National Livestock Trans Transformation Policy. And the uh, council approved the two prayers. NEC also received an update on the review of the status of ownership structure of the electricity power distributing companies. Also received at NEC today is the LOC chairman of EDU 2020 uh, preparation for the National Sport Festival in EDU. The deputy governor of EDU state presented a document to the, <coughs> to the effects of the level of preparedness by EDU state government. Briefing on the development of coronavirus, the governor of Lagos State, Babajide Sangwolu, explained that all necessary measures have been put in place at the major international airports in Nigeria to ensure that the virus did not get access into the country. We're looking at all of the major international airports that we have as major entry points, um, the Federal Capital Territory, Lagos, Kano, Enugu, and Port Harcourt. They continue to be the major source of um, external um, inroad into the country, and so the, the alertness in, in each of these airports are very, very high. 
But we also have four diagnostic testing facilities that are ready um, at the NCDC um, lab in Abuja, Luth in Lagos, in Edo State, and also a university in Oshu. On the issue of security, the council made it clear that all state governors are taking proactive measures and a more collaborative and comprehensive strategies at addressing the security challenges of the country. From the State House, Ali Kabir, NTA News. So, religious leaders in the country have been called upon to eschew sentiments not to be swayed by the antics of Boko Haram and Iswap, who have been targeting Christians for attack. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed uh, said this during a media briefing in Abuja. Anthony Forsen reports. The Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed explained that the antics of Boko Haram and Iswap is the last desperate move by the disillusioned killers to stay relevant despite their continued decimation by Nigeria's gallant troops, hence the need to constantly support them in their operation. We appeal to Nigerians to support the military as it moves to decapitate the insurgents. Second guessing the military at this time is like playing into the hands of Boko Haram. La Mohammed recalled how Boko Haram carried out its attacks in the past without discrimination. Churches and mosques, Christians and Muslims were attacked. In the wake of the renewed onslaught by the Nigerian military against Boko Haram and their Iswap allies, the insurgents have equally changed strategy by targeting Christians and their villages with specific motive of triggering a religious war and throw the country into chaos, knowing how emotive and divisive religion can be when exploited. The insurgents who delude themselves as Muslims, whereas they are nothing more than bloodthirsty, rapacious killers who subscribe to no religion, have recently started targeting Christians so with a view to sowing the seed of confusion and discord between the two great religions. This is not to say that they have stopped attacking Muslims, but they seem to now have a deliberate policy of attacking Christians. The minister added that the killing of the Adama state countryman, the attack on Kwarangulum, a Christian village near Chibok, as well as the killing of Popville Dachia, among others, fits into the Boko Haram plot. It is therefore worthy of note that the war against the insurgents is paying off, citing the killing of Iswap leaders, successful attack against Boko Haram leadership in Alafa, the killing of Boko Haram chief George, among others. Anthony Forson. NTA News. Towards enhancing security of lives and property, Kano State's government is establishing a military training ground at the Falguri Forest, a notorious criminal hideout in the southern part of the state. Minister of Defense Bashir Magashi performed the ceremonial foundation lane witnessed by Governor Abdullahi Umar Ganduje. Abdullahi Mustafa has details. Falguara Forest was developed about 70 years ago to protect the ecosystem and subsequently a games reserve. For more than two decades, the forest has been a safe haven for armed robbers, cattle rustlers and kidnappers before being dislodged through a combined operation by security agencies. To make it permanently safe, Kano State Government initiated the establishment of a military training ground within. Governor Ganduji disclosed that 500 million naira has been released to ensure timely completion of the project. In Kano, Abdullahi Mustafa, NTA News. 
The Nigeria Governors Forum is backing the implementation of geo-referenced infrastructure and demographic data in the country. Abubakar Usman Akwanga reports that this formed part of the forum's communique at its second meeting in Abuja. The geo-referenced infrastructure and demographic data for development grade 3 is designed to strengthen the application of geospatial data for evidence-based decision-making in the country. The economic concept which was delivered by the Minister of Finance, Zainab Ahmed, at the forum will give priority to food security, health coverage, financial inclusion and education. This will ensure that state governments have the right information in identifying where people live and how critical services can be most equitably and effectively allocated. Senior Special Advisor to the President on Enabling Environment Council, Dr. Jumoke Oduoli, briefed state governors on the activities of the council on ease of doing business, which received endorsement of the forum. The forum also received presentation from the Minister of Environment, Mohammed Mahmoud Abubakar, on federal government commitment to planting 25 million trees in line with Paris Agreement. The governors commended the initiative and pledged to demarcate and gazette areas for forest reserves and socio-economic benefit and preservation of the ecosystem. The forum was also updated on the 3050 megawatt Mambila hydroelectric power project with ministers of power and water resources to provide more pathways for proffering immediate solutions. The Director General of NYC Brigadier General Shoaibu Ibrahim appealed to the forum for continued collaboration in the areas of welfare and security of core members in Abuja. Abubakar Usman Akwanga, NTA News. Leadership of the People's Democratic Party says the process for the conduct of the party congresses in 26 states is ongoing and must be rank off free. This position was reached at the 89th National Executive Committee meeting of the party in Abuja. Timothy Yusuf reports. The next meeting deliberated on the state of the nation with issues ranging from insecurity, economy and the party's state congresses top on the agenda. Members lauded the Supreme Court for standing by its verdict on the Bayelsa governorship election. On the party's state congresses, NEC called for strict adherence to the approved guidelines. The leadership is ensuring that we come out of it rank of free, stronger and more united in these states. As we go into congresses, we are appealing that we shall all be all inclusive in whatever we are going to do. We shall be transparent. You can be reassured that we will not shake in our duties. The 15 governors elected on the party's platform earlier met with the National Working Committee. They resolved to work towards regaining past popularity of the party as well as deepening democratic ideals in the country. The governor of Abia State, Okeze Ikbazu, was unanimously elected as the PDP Governors Forum's vice chairman. The governor of Bayelsa State, Senator Doyediri, attended the meeting for the first time since his assumption of office. In Abuja, Timothy Yusuf, NT News. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, in collaboration with the Development Research and Projects Center in Partnership for Advocacy in Child and Family Health at SCALE, have organized a three-day summit to discuss adolescent reproductive health and family planning as part of the first university's sustainable development goals. Major Ma'a Adamu reports that the summit is holding at the Amadou Bello University's area. The summit, led by the 2019 goalkeepers in Nigeria, brought together more than 1,000 students across universities in the country. Organized in partnership with the Center for Development and Advanced Learning, the goalkeepers described the drive to create awareness among the youth on reproductive health and family planning as key to the attaining the SDG Goal 3. Led by Saeed Tafida, Michael Tonwet, and Yushao Abubakar, the goalkeepers said the rights of the adolescent and the youth to access quality health care services, including family planning, are often times challenging. They advocated for coordinated actions in providing access to comprehensive sexual education services to prevent, diagnose, and treat sexually transmitted diseases and counseling for family planning as provided under the United Nations Population Fund, which are becoming difficult to young Nigerians. The country acknowledges the need for an effective policy framework 
as an instrument for appropriate, pragmatic actions aimed at improving the health and well-being of adolescents and young people. We have a very good enshrined system where we work to make sure that we have stronger institutions. So these are all issues that I think young people should start engaging themselves in it. As the struggles for the attainment of the sustainable development goals by the year 2030 gather momentum, Pakfa at scale helps to usher in more goalkeepers like Tafida and his co-advocates for accelerated attainment of the goals. In Zaria, my Jama Adamu, NTA News. Africa's largest television network, the NTA, is rejigging its content to align with public aspirations while meeting its corporate image and national mandate. The network's program directorate is taking the lead in the drive to achieving this new target. Olabode Arewa reports. It is no understatement that Nigerian Television Authority is currently undergoing transformation to be truly world class in the delivery of news and programs. This meeting with NTA Director General Malam Yakubu Ibn Mohammed and top management at the headquarters in Abuja affords NTA heads of programs an opportunity to be appraised of the current direction of the NTA. I'm making progress, right? But uh, for us to make progress the way you know, we want to advance, we need to engage the public and the consistently, constantly, and uh, with a singularity of purpose. And this is what, you know, meetings such as these, you know, uh, can all, you know, they offer all such opportunities. At the end of this gathering, I hope you will all go back to your various stations and make remarkable difference in our screen and content output. It's very, very beneficial. In line with the tradition of rewarding outstanding contributing stations to network programming, NTA Benin, Ibada, Medjugorje, Cardena, Lagos and Portacot were specially recognized. Recently, an implementation committee was inaugurated to drive the NTA's 2020 corporate targets. The committee has already begun its work in Abuja or Labo Darewa. NTA News. Oh, stepping it up a notch, you asked for it. Now let's join Hinginu in Lagos for a story. Hinginu? Thank you, Joseph, and welcome to Lagos. Women are no longer satisfied with the supportive roles they play, and they are now asking for full participation and equal opportunities to contribute more to national development. This was at the Investiture of Board of Trustees and Awards of the National Council for Women's Societies, Nigeria. Lynn Lenneke reports that the wife of the President, Aisha Buhari, was represented at the event held in Lagos. Women constitute an indispensable force in the quest to build a strong nation. Wife of the President, Aisha Buhari, who was represented, said, as bridge builders, women must use their platform to serve as a voice for the less privileged in the country. I do believe that if a woman is qualified for a position and has a track record of performance, she should be given the opportunity to prove herself. Investiture of Board of Trustee Members and Award was conferred on philanthropist Adebutu and His Royal Highness Apollos Chu, Paramount Ruler of Okori LMA Community in River State. I feel a sense of pride to be associated with this August body of young young women. I am calling on all Nigerians and all royal fathers and all political officers and all elected officers and even the parliament to try to support the women agenda. National President NCWS at the event unveiled the council's plan to establish a call center for emergency situations for women across the country. The secretariat will also provide a one-stop desk to provide information and assistance for business and technical examination, 72.91% obtained five credits and above, including English language and mathematics. The registrar and chief executive of NAPTEP, Professor Ifoma Isugo Abanie, disclosed these at the press briefing in Benin to announce the release of the results. Obehio Tobo Presai reports. NAPTEP, since its inception in 1992, 
has continued to ensure it achieves its mandate to contribute to the socioeconomic growth of the country by conducting efficient examinations, not only for candidates seeking higher education, but also to provide qualified technical and vocational professionals. Annually, thousands of young Nigerians key into this opportunity provided by the board. Relaying the November-December 2019 results, Professor Isiugo Abanihe confirms that 49,302 candidates consisting 30,047 males and 19,993 females participated in the examinations. I am delighted to announce that the performance analysis revealed that 32,000 349 candidates representing 72.91% of candidates who sat for those exams obtained scores with five credits and above. The registrar, while commending President Muhammadu Buhari for approving and releasing funds for immediate establishment of six federal science and technical colleges in the six geopolitical zones of the country, suggested funding for research and awareness campaign on the importance of TVET for successful utilization of the initiative. In Benin, Obehi Utoba Presai, NTA News. Deputy State Governor Dr. Kayode Faimi has commended the Federal Road Safety Corps in its efforts to achieving zero road crashes on Nigerian highways. This was expressed when the governor visited the Corps' headquarters in Abuja. Oyeyemi Ajayi has details. This is the first time the Ekiti State Governor, Dr. Kayode Faimi, we will be visiting the Federal Safety Corps headquarters in Abuja since assumption of office. This cuts the visit was an opportunity for the Corps Marshal to brief the Governor firsthand on the operations of the Commission. While conducting the Governor on a tour around the facility, which included the monitor room, training and traffic radio station, Governor Fayemi expressed satisfaction at efforts and level of efficiency deployed in ensuring sanity on the highways. It's not just the national level, it's an exemplary institution that can even teach the rest of us how to manage institutions in a process-driven manner. The governor urged the Federal Safety Corps not to relent on its oars of ensuring safety on Nigerian highways. In Abuja, Oye Yemi Ajayi, NT News. Let's now quickly join Naomi in Meduguri for a story. Thank you, Joseph, for joining us in Medugri. Growing cases of neurological disorder from traumatic effects of the insurgency on people of northeastern Nigeria affected by the conflict and other circumstances has necessitated the establishment of an institution to train specialist nurses in effective management of victims. It is in the view of this that the Board of Management Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital Medugri is improving facilities at the School of Psychiatric Nursing, the only one in the Northeast. Abu Bakar Muhammad Musa reports. The idea behind setting up the project was conceived towards providing more robust neurological services in view of rising mental challenges within and outside northern Nigeria. This is particularly necessary with the traumatic conditions victims of the recurrent Boko Haram insurgency attacks in the Northeast have been going through. 106 nurses, 6 nursing tutors, and 1 lecturer of human anatomy and physiology are expected to man the 156 bed capacity hostel. We want the best of nurses for this uh, psychiatric hospital, so we must also provide them with the best of facilities. It's not just a pride for Borno State, it's not just a pride for this institution, but it's pride for the entire citizens of the Northeast Geopolitical Zone. The School of Neuropsychiatric Nursing, Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital, Meduguri, is the only facility in the Northeast training specialist nurses in the management of neurological, trauma, and other related mental cases in the sub region and beyond. In Meduguri, Abu Bakr Mohammed Musa, NTA News. Stay with us. We are back shortly.
Sound sense of loss, but gratitude to God for a life well spent. The Datong Longjan family announces the passing of its beloved husband, father, uncle, senator, and elder statesman, distinguished Senator Ignatius Datong Longjan, on the 10th of February 2020, following a brief illness. Senator Ignatius Longjan represented Plateau South Senatorial District in the current Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He had served in the Ministry of External Affairs as a diplomat. Senator Longjan was elected Deputy Governor Plateau State from 2011 to 2015. He is survived by a wife.